Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Reapy Ron, and today we're going to be going over builds for the Warthog Auto Shotgun. It's been a while since I talked about the Warthog, and I've been using it a lot more frequently. So first up, I'm going to go over non-overclock builds, then we're going to be talking about each of the overclocks and the builds that I use for them. So let's just begin. The first one will be kind of a general purpose build, and then I'll explain what the next build is. So in tier one, we have improved rate of fire, or we have larger magazines. Usually I go with the extra rate of fire here, mostly because I reload cancel the auto shotgun pretty often. Um, the way that you can do this is once you hit your reload and you see the ammo actually go into the gun, you don't have to wait for the rest of the animation. You just can click your pickaxe, you'll swing, and then immediately just let go of that, and your shotgun will be out with a faster reload than it otherwise would be. If you don't like doing that, which I can understand it can be a little bit ha of a hassle to do each time, um, then the larger magazine is pretty good. Other Otherwise, I like the increased rate of fire. It makes the gun feel a little bit more uh, snappy to me. In tier two, we have expanded ammo bags. This gives us 42 more ammo. Pretty good. We have loaded shells. This gives us two more pellets. So we're increasing our damage quite a bit. And then we have choke, which reduces your base spread by 50%. I kind of wish that they would move some of these around for the Warthog because these are arguably three of the best mods for the Warthog. And the one that I pretty much always go with, at least with the regular Warthog, is the expanded ammo bags. Now the Warthog is pretty good at taking care of grunts. It's pretty good at taking care of just about everything, so long as you're fighting them at a close to medium distance. With the loaded shells, you can make it so you get a lot more damage, because right now you have a total of 56 damage. However, that is enough damage on any difficulty to one-shot headshot grunts, so damage isn't entirely necessary on it. Um, that is assuming that you hit with all the pellets on the head. This makes it so that there's more room for air, because now you can one-shot headshot them still. I don't think you quite one-shot slashers if you hit them in the head with this. You will need to follow up with a body shot. The choke is also pretty nice, because you can hit things in the head easier at longer ranges, and it makes it great for taking care of Mactera. But just the limited amount of ammo, you kind of fill that. So expanded ammo bags is usually the better choice here, at least in my opinion. In tier three, we have recoil dampener to lessen the recoil. Pretty good, even though it's not that hard to keep the auto shotgun on target. Even if you set this to full rate of fire with the uh, minor adjustments, which we'll talk about in a little bit, it's not that bad to control. It doesn't bounce around too much. If you are finding it difficult to control, and maybe it is on uh, controller, I haven't used the Warthog on controller for a while. Uh, then potentially the recoil dampener can help you out. We have the quick fire ejector in tier three as well. This increases our reload speed from two seconds to 1.5 seconds, which this does make it so we can reload cancel even quicker. And then we have high capacity magazine. This gives us two more rounds in the gun. So we go from holding six to eight. Usually I go with the higher capacity magazine here. I find it to be pretty useful. I like having the eight shells in the gun. Uh, but really any of these are fine. It's completely your choice. In tier four, we have the tungsten coated buckshot. This gives us more armor breaking, which this one can be good if you plan on shooting things like Praetorians in the face. Uh, if you plan on moving around them though, then usually the increased damage is better because this gives us one more damage per pellet. So we go from potentially 56 damage up to 64 damage. So we have a little bit more consistent damage on our gun. Now this doesn't, again, mess with the breakpoint of shooting grunts in the head which is kind of useful, but in most cases the extra damage is more valuable than the armor breaking. And then in tier 5 we have turret whip. I really like it since they buffed it. This makes it so when you shoot the turret with the shotgun, uh, this is best if you're running two turrets as well. If you shoot one of your turrets with a shotgun shot, it consumes five of the turret ammo. The turret, the next shot fired from the turret will then do increased damage as well as AOE damage and can stun enemies. This also inflicts fear to all enemies that it was hit and this does break armor a little bit easier. So it's great for it if your turret is aiming at a Praetorian or if it's aiming at a guard. This again won't break armor that's unbreakable so oppressors it will still hurt them because it does AOE damage but it won't uh, break off their armor or anything like that. So this one, really good if you like running the turrets and if you like managing your turrets, it can be super useful. And then our other option is minor adjustments. This changes your shotgun from semi-auto to full auto and gives you half a point more of rate of fire. Um, I usually take minor adjustments with my standard shotgun loadout, but either of these are really good. It really depends on if you're running two turrets, if you're running one turret. Even with one turret, turret whip can still be pretty good. I prefer it with two though, because then you have two targets. Although every time I do take turret whip, I usually run through turret ammo pretty fast. So there is a little bit of a downside there for taking that. Second build that I'd kind of recommend for the Warthog without any overclocks besides this one would be going with more of a spam fire build. So you're just firing it at the body. 
And if you're doing that, then you still want the extra ammo. I would recommend switching this to turret whip, probably taking the faster reload speed here and then taking the armor breaking. You could go with the larger magazine here in tier one. Now you can't spam fire this incredibly fast if you do take that. You, you probably want to have the uh, faster rate of fire, but this does make it so you can break through things like Praetorians and guards a little bit quicker. Um, it's not really going to help you against most other enemies, but it's not going to be at a huge detriment to you from taking the other build. Sometimes I run this, most of the time I'm running this build though. Our first clean overclock is Stunner. Stunner makes it so all of our pellets have an increased chance of stunning enemies. Uh, well, sort of. It makes it so there's an increased chance of stunning enemies if it's hitting anything besides weak spots. So instead of just hitting the head or hitting like a uh, Mactera's, uh stomach, underside, whatever you want to call it, hitting them anywhere has a chance of stunning them. And we also do increase damage when they are stunned. We do 30% more damage. Now, Stunner is probably one of the least flashy overclocks in the game and an overclock that I really don't use that much. If I am going to run it, I usually run it the exact same way that I run my regular uh, Warthog. This works just fine. We can stun enemies pretty often. We get a little bit of increased damage. It's not too noticeable against most enemies because usually we're one to three shotting enemies. Unless it's like a Praetorian, in which case we kill it with like one less shell. Could go with loaded shells here too and just get increased damage on uh, the stun so that you're doing even more damage per shot. And you have a higher chance of stunning because you are shooting out more pellets. All right, our next clean overclock is the lightweight cases. This one's great. This one is really useful on the Warthog. So this gives you more maximum ammo. So we go from having 90 rounds to 108 rounds and we have a faster reload time. This pretty much gives us the quick fire ejector. This one does make it so the gun is pretty flexible to be built however you would like. And sometimes I don't take the expanded ammo bags. Now taking it's pretty nice because then you go from the 90 to a 150. That's pretty good. You could go with loaded shells to have more damage or you could go with choke. And I really like choke with this one. I usually go with the increased rate of fire in tier one, choke in tier two so that we have a tighter spread. Uh, usually I go with the increased magazine size here, go with the bigger pellets in tier four, and then go with the minor adjustments. This one's pretty good for taking out enemies at a distance, and it's very reliable at killing things like Mactera. You could go with the faster reload speed too and have a really quick reload. I like that as well. Um, really any of these in tier three are fine. So this is one way that I usually build uh, lightweight magazines. If I'm going to take turret whip with it, then I usually go with turret whip and then switch this for the expanded ammo bags. This is just so that I can use turret whip a little bit more often, um, assuming I have ammo for it. And then sometimes I go with the quick fire ejector here. All right, then we move on to our one and only balanced overclock because we only have five overclocks to talk about with the Warthog. I really wish they'd give it like one or two more. Anyway, we have magnetic pellet alignment. This lowers our rate of fire, so we lose out on a little bit of that, but we gain 30% more weak spot damage, so our weak spot damage is increased pretty significantly then, and we pretty much have choke, so our spread is reduced by 50%. Now, this one can be really good, especially if you just plan on taking minor adjustments, because then it's pretty much nothing but a buff. Um, your gun goes right back to the original rate of fire, but you have that 30% weak spot damage and you also have that 50% reduced spread so you can hit weak spots even easier. So I usually go with the increased rate of fire here again, just because it feels nice. You could go with the oversized magazine though. That's a good option. Uh, you can go with more pellets with this. If you want to take out big things quickly, it's pretty good because in most cases you're dealing a lot of extra damage and I usually go with bigger pellets here. So you're dealing about 200 damage on weak spots. That I think is enough to kill slashers with one shot to the head and it's pretty easy to hit them in the head. Guards, you're still gonna require two shots and you can kill things like oppressors and Praetorians a little bit quicker. Um, going to the extra ammo though is a pretty good option too if you're not too concerned about uh, having to one shot slashers and you're still okay. Uh, and you feel like you need that extra ammo, but it is an option. I wouldn't recommend going with choke here. It does have your spread again, but that's not really necessary, I would say. It can be fun, because it is pretty fun to use the shotgun at very long ranges to pick off stuff. But I think going with either one of these two is a better option. And then once again in tier three, all of these are great options. It's really your call. I like going with the quick fire ejectors. I like going with a bigger magazine, but recoil dampener is good too. And then for the unstable overclocks, we have cycle overload. This increases our pellet damage by one, increases our rate of fire by two, but increases our reload speed by half a second. So a little bit slower reload. And uh, we also have an increase in spread. 
you could take choke and then you're really not at that much of a disadvantage but I usually don't. It's pretty fun to run at full rate of fire. So if you go with the faster rate of fire in tier one and then with minor adjustments, you have a crazy fast rate of fire. You can run through the clip pretty quick and it can be a little bit difficult to control. But if you get it right up close to something like an oppressor or a Praetorian, you will kill it really fast with this. The usual way that I build this is going with increased rate of fire because I find it pretty nice. Um, going with, again, any of these in tier 2 are fine. The extra damage is pretty nice because then we're dealing 80 damage per shot. The expanded ammo bags is also a great option because we just have extra ammo then. Recoil dampener is honestly not bad with this because of how fast it can fire. I actually do like it then, but I still usually go with the high capacity magazine in this case. Uh, bigger pellets because we want even more damage. And then minor adjustments is pretty much what I always take. You can shoot this incredibly quick. It can kill hordes really fast and it can kill large enemies really quick. It is more limited to range than the normal Warthog though. So it's not that great against Mactera, at least that aren't flying really close to you. And it can also be pretty difficult to take out anything at a distance. And then our last overclock is mini shells. Mini shells lowers our damage by two, but gives us a lot more ammo, doubles our magazine size. So we go from holding six to 12, that's pretty nice. We no longer can stun though on weak spots. So that is a little bit annoying, but honestly, I don't mind it all that much. Uh, and we also reduce our recoil by 50%, so it's easier to keep the gun on target. I usually build this one of two ways, either with a turret whip build in mind or just with a regular kind of general purpose build in mind. If I'm going with general purpose, I increase the rate of fire. I take loaded shells and I take bigger pellets. You want to have loaded shells and bigger pellets in this way because then you do hit the break point of where you can one shot headshot grunts. And then in tier three, again, all of these are pretty good options. I wouldn't recommend going with another recoil reduction. It's really not necessary. Probably with the faster reloads or with the bigger magazine. Um, usually I go with the bigger magazine and hold 14 rounds, but quick reloads are great too. And then I go with minor adjustments so that we have a full auto shotgun. This works pretty similar to the regular Warthog, just that you have about twice the amount of ammunition that you otherwise would. And that feels pretty great to use. If you want to use it as a turret whip gun, then I usually go with the expanded ammo bags in tier two, and I go with the turret whip in tier five. These other ones I generally keep the same. This gives us a lot more ammo where we go up to 210 rounds with 14 rounds in the gun. We have a lot of bullets. I almost always run out of turret rounds before I ever come close to running out of ammo with the gun with this. It is a little bit annoying though because you do need to hit a grunt in the head once and then hit it in the body once if you want to kill it. So you're never going to be able to one shot a grunt, at least by hitting it in the head, unless there is critical weakness involved. So that's all the builds that I use for the Warthog shotgun. Hopefully this kind of helped you out. Uh, as you can kind of see, the Warthog, I build mostly the same with each of the overclocks and I kind of wish that at least these tier two mods were moved around like maybe put choke somewhere else or maybe make put the loaded shells somewhere else. Hopefully this kind of helped you out. Uh, next up, we're going to be taking a look at Stubby and all of their overclocks. So that should be a lot of fun. Special thanks to the supporters of this channel. These are my members over here on YouTube and my patrons over on Patreon. They get early access to videos like this. And if you would like to be a part of that, you can. There is links down in the description. Remember to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.